Hello everyone and welcome to Robotics and Aerospace Tutorials. In this tutorial we explain one very important topic for properly understanding kinematics and dynamics of rigid bodies. Namely, we explain the concept of rotation matrices. In particular, we will explain the meaning and derive the expression for the rotation matrix around the z-axis. In the next two tutorials we will derive the expressions for the rotation matrices around x and y axis. But before I start with explanations, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as almost 400 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. Consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Also, if you have a question or a comment about the material presented in this lecture, please feel free to ask your question in the comments section below. Okay, let's start. We consider two coordinate systems, A and B. The coordinate systems are also called frames in aerospace and robotics engineering. The coordinate system B is rotated with respect to the coordinate system A around the axis ZA for the angle theta. Over here you can see the unit vectors of the coordinate system A and B. The unit vectors of the coordinate system A are IA, JA and KA. Similarly, the unit vectors of the coordinate system B are IB, JB and KB. Next, let's consider this figure. Over here, we introduce the vector P. And here's the problem that we want to solve. Knowing the coordinates of the vector P in the coordinate system B and the angle of rotation theta, find the coordinates of the vector P in the coordinate system A. To solve this problem, let us introduce the following notation. P with the superscript A is equal to P X A P Y A and P Z A. This notation denotes the vector P expressed in the coordinate system A. Similarly, this notation P with the superscript B is equal to P X B P Y B P Z B is the vector P expressed in the coordinate system B. P X A, P Y A and P Z A are the projections of the vector P onto the coordinate axis X A, Y A and Z A. Similarly, PXB, PYB, and PZB are the projections of the vector P onto the coordinate axis XB, YB, and ZB. Here, we should keep in mind that the vectors PA and PB are actually denoting the same vector P, only expressed in different coordinate systems. The vector P expressed in the coordinate system A can be represented like this where IA, JA, and KA are the unit vectors. Similarly, the vector P expressed in the coordinate system B can be written like this, where IB, JB, and KB are the unit vectors of the coordinate system B. Here, one very important thing should be kept in mind. The unit vectors of both coordinate systems, A and B, are actually expressed in the same basis, that is, they are expressed by using coordinates of some other coordinate system. That's why we can establish this relation. Or we can write it like this. Next, let's take this expression and let's take this expression and let's substitute these expressions in this equation. As the result, we obtain this equation. Next, let us scalarly multiply this equation by IA. As the result, we obtain this equation. How did we obtain this equation? 
If I scalarly multiply this equation by IA on the left hand side, I only obtain PXA. This is because IA scalarly multiplied by IA is 1. Then JA scalarly multiplied by IA is equal to 0 simply because IA and JA are perpendicular vectors. Similarly, this term is equal to 0 simply because KA and IA are perpendicular vectors. And as the result, on the left-hand side, I only obtain PXA. The right-hand side looks like this after multiplying it by IA. Next, let's scalarly multiply this equation by JA. And as the result, we obtain this equation. The logic is the same. Then, let us scalarly multiply this equation by KA. And as the result, we obtain this equation. We can group this equation, this equation, and this equation, and we can write them together. And as the result, we obtain a system of equations in the equation 11. These equations can be written compactly in matrix notation, and as the result, we obtain the equation 12. So what did I do over here? I simply grouped these terms, and I put them in a vector. And here's the vector. And I took the left hand side and I wrote the left hand side as the vector over here. Now by using the previously introduced notations for the projections of the vector P onto the coordinate systems A and B, we can clearly recognize that this part over here is actually P, B. This part over here is P, A. And here is the result. This matrix R, B, A is actually this matrix. The matrix R, B with respect to A is the rotation matrix. The superscript and subscript notation in R, B with respect to A mean that the rotation matrix transforms projections of a vector from the coordinate system B into the coordinate system A. Next, let us consider this figure. This figure shows the top view of the unit vectors of the coordinate system A and B. Since these are the unit vectors, we can establish the following equations. IB scalarly multiplying IA, that is this vector scalarly multiplying this vector, is obviously equal to cosinus theta. Similarly, JB, that is this vector scalarly multiplying IA, is minus sinus theta. And similarly, KB scalarly multiplying IA is zero. And similarly, we can obtain other equations by substituting these equations into this expression for our rotation matrix, we finally obtain the final equation representing the rotation matrix around the z-axis. And here it is. The rotation matrix defines the rotation of two coordinate systems around the z-a axis. To summarize, this expression implements a mapping. It transforms the projections of the vector P expressed in the coordinate system B into the projections of the vector P expressed in the coordinate system A. Another important property of the rotation matrices is that they are orthogonal. That is, this relationship can be established. This means if we take the inverse of our rotation matrices, the inverse is equal to the matrix transpose. And this is very important. Namely, let us write this expression once more. If we multiply this expression by the inverse of this rotation matrix, we will obtain this expression. Now, using this fact, we will write this equation like this, and finally, we can express P in the coordinate system B as this rotation matrix multiplying P 
with respect to A. And this is very important. In this way, we can reverse the process. That is, we can take P in A and compute P in B by simply multiplying P in A by the corresponding rotation matrix. And this rotation matrix is simply transposed of our original rotation matrix. More about the properties of the rotation matrices can be found in my other tutorial, which can be found over here. A link will be provided in the description below. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.